Okay, process is primary. We know that with the growth mindset, it's not that outcomes aren't important, but if the focus is just on the outcome, that's quite a fixed way of looking at things. It's looking at the process. The how is someone going to achieve something? That might be the goal, but actually what is within the control of the student or the teacher or the school or the organisation in order to improve? Um, this is one teacher came up with the idea of rather than focusing on who's got the most right in their times tables test, actually who's improved the most. At whatever level they were at, she found students wanting to have their test, going home and learning and practising, because it was actually, let's see if I can get how much I can improve by today. If you're getting 10 out of 10 all the time, you know, what, they wanted harder things so they could find it harder to get lower scores to then improve. Um, and just that simple change actually created quite a significant change in behaviour. One of the other schools that they, they did, so they have a programme <coughs> called uh, Mathletics, and we asked the teacher again, we, we'd, given, we'd suggested the, the, the framework to them and the idea of focusing on the process and most improved, and he applied that to mathematics. And we asked what the most, um, what, what impact he'd seen was no copying, no cheating in, in little times tables tests. So again, just the fact they were focused on their doing their personal best actually made them a lot less worried about what other people were doing or being top of the class. It was just about them doing their best. Um, one thing I've been very interested in, um, with my other hat on with the sports commission, is. Um, uh, of public health, if you like, um, sedentary lifestyles, getting people active early. We do a PE in schools program. This is my daughter's um, uh, sports day, first sports day I went to as a parent. Um, and this is a celebration of physical activity and sport and everything. And you'll probably notice that virtually everyone sat down. And they were sat down for pretty much the whole time. <laughs> also, you'll notice in this photo, there's a podium for whoever comes first, second or third in the overall races. Um, so pretty much the kids between September and January births, probably winning the races because they're the biggest and the strongest, and the same people pretty much winning everything. Okay, so this alarmed me slightly because I had a bit of a growth mindset hat on watching it as well as a commission one, and we were working with another school, and we spoke to them about actually what can we do about sports day because it's not just the children but it's actually another opportunity where if you look at all of that, that's all parents, all parents engaging with the school. Um, around their children and how do, what are we actually communicating to them about what we're celebrating when little Johnny is standing up on the podium with a gold medal and everyone else is sat down clapping him. Okay? So we designed a, a new sports day which was a carousel of activities which didn't have any chairs put out for parents to sit down. We did some measurements with the children around actually four disciplines and actually getting their personal best. We then told them that sports day was going to be points were going to be awarded for who improved the most rather than who had the best score the fastest time. <coughs> the school put the PE equipment out at break time and lunch time for them to practice if they wanted to and then they went round and we just measured personal bests all the way round. And everyone stood up and no one sat down for an hour and a bit. Okay? Um, so again looking at something you do which is a traditional school institution and putting a growth mindset lens on it, but also using it as a tool of communicating and engaging with parents. So those are our ten steps um, that we've used, and it just became an organic project. It was about going where people wanted us, going where people were ready for us, not forcing it down people's throats, and, and also for our point of view, some of our best work we've actually done in social settings. We had the senior leadership team of one of the schools come up and meet us in the pub for a couple of hours and actually just talk through what they'd done or some ideas they had and bounce it off us and that's kind of, and then they've just gone and got on with it. So the kind of organic nature of how we've gone about it but also how we've been given the permission by our leadership just to get on and do it and be organic. We've, we've done research all the way through and we've got teachers doing um, extended projects around um, qualifications that they're taking. Um, we know it's making a difference. Just a little bit about the PSHE curriculum. I mean, key, as, we, as I keep saying, is teachers to be aware of their mindsets. Okay. Um, one of the schools was very keen to say, well, how actually can we teach this explicitly to children? Is it something that's worth doing? I said, well, yeah, there are aspects that, yes, teach them explicitly about the brain, teach them about what the mindsets are, help them understand it. So I worked with one teacher to put together a six-week programme. It was for a primary school. And then another... Um, school, another uh, special needs coordinator actually said she was quite concerned about a small group of children who attendance was a little bit iffy, quite anxious children, 
did I think that working with them through something like this would be helpful? Um, and she came up with the idea of, of having this group together and calling them brain leaders. And they were going to be the group of the school who were piloting, trying out something which was, was new. They felt really special. They were brilliant. They really engaged in it. They loved it. And we did this work with them. They were um, 9, 10, 11 year olds. Um, and actually they'd already started the school talking a little bit about things like failure and that first attempt in learning or further attempt in learning and how making mistakes is, is you know, a good thing if we learn from them. And we've done this thing before, I don't know if people are aware of it, where you give people Smarties and you say to them, the blue Smarties, they're really special. Because if you take a blue Smartie, you'll never fail or make a mistake ever again. And when we do this, well, sometimes with teachers, but students, well, they're lapping up the blue Smarties, and, and then we go through it all, and then by the end, they're kind of debating, actually, whether that is the right thing to do. So I started off with these brain leaders with some Smarties. Well, all, all 12, apart from one, wouldn't take a blue Smartie. Straight away, I said, well, I'll take a blue Smartie. Because, you know, you've got, to, you've got to make mistakes. You've got to fail to learn. You've got to, you've got to do, and I was like, whoa, this school has only been looking at this for a few weeks, but already this message is getting through through to the children. So it was brilliant. And we did all sorts of things about the brain, about learning lines, um, and, and again, a little bit of assessment about what impact that was, that was making. Um, this is one of the high schools. It's going to be starting this September, um, replacing their traditional life skills course with wellbeing lessons. And they're going to provide a greater focus on the concepts of growth mindset, and I can, and I am. And this is a letter that's gone home to parents, again, communicating, getting it out wider in the community, that this is something that they're considering is really important. This is a school uh, looking at uh, their feedback, uh, their marking and feedback policy, and they've got one of their aims is to promote a positive growth mindset. So again, this gets communicated to parents as well. Another example of a, a letter to parents, things that they're doing. This term brings us lots of opportunities to grow and learn. Um, it can take a long time to become an expert at something you are not yet very good at. So basically learning to make mistakes. So communicating to parents, this is what we're trying to do. Help your children as well. 